Hey everybody, welcome to my channel. This is Harika. So today I'm in front of you to talk about and to showcase one of the real time project uh, which is available on bots DNA. So this is a small process, but yeah, it involves a lot of different aspects. And today I am going to showcase you how you can actually start working on these kind of projects and how you can actually take it to the next step that how you can actually understand the, how you can actually design the processes, all of this stuff. So before we actually go into the development phase, there are a lot of things that you really have to put some focus on because it's as a developer, you not just, you know, build a code or you not just build a process. Everything uh, before development plays equal and important role once after you start the development. So what I exactly mean by that is, if you're starting to work on a project, then you have to take some time understanding how you're going to solution it, right? Let's say if there's a process, so do you want this whole process to be kept in a single one or you wanted to keep it as a dispatcher in the performer model? So if you don't know what's a dispatcher in the performer at this point of time, don't worry. I will be talking about it very clearly in this particular video. So what exactly is the dispatcher? What exactly is a performer? So are you going to solution it like a dispatcher performer? And how you're going to streamline your process and how you're going to do the exception handling? All these things that you have to keep in mind before you actually start the development. Otherwise, it will become a difficult point if you wanted to do some changes later on in the code. So that being said, I'm also going to show you one project, how you're going to do the solutioning, how you're actually building that in a framework, right? So now uh, when I am talking about the real-time project, I am going to showcase how you will build that in the dispatcher and how you will streamline the items to the performer as well. So these are all the things that I'm going to cover in this particular video because this is something that I am going to target for a beginner. Like if you're someone who wants to learn RPA, who wants to learn how you can start your development in UiPath and want to build some real time projects by getting some good idea and understanding, then this video definitely serve you the best. And I'm going to showcase what all the things that you have to know before you actually start the development. So without any ado, let me share my screen. So this is the use case that I am focusing today, which is active loans. So in this process, first I'll explain you what is the requirement, right? So first you should know what is the process and later you have to think about how you're going to solution it, right? How you're going to build the process in automation, right? So first thing is uh, you, the user have to come to this particular application, okay? And after that user will be clicking on this input.xlsx. So once after you click, you will have this getting downloaded over here. Just go to that file. So once after you open that input.xlsx, you can see Okay, here it is. So once after you open that particular file, you can see there are a lot of account numbers coming over here, right? So what you have to actually do is just from the from each and every account number. So let's say I am in this is my account number, right? So from this account number, from the first account number, I have to take the last four digits, that is 7325. And I should go into this particular website and I have to search for 7345. Is that correct? 7325, sorry. 7325. So I can see here, it is Saptagiri Gramin Bank, right? So just click on this and it will be 
downloading an another file and this is a zip file so you should unzip this file my system is pretty slow today just unzip that file okay and once after you unzip Just open this text file. Okay. So you can see account number, bank, branch, loan taken on, amount, and EMI. Right. So you can see all these fields here as well. Let me just keep them next to each other. Right. Bank, branch, loan taken on, amount, EMI. Right. All these fields should be fetch from here and should be filled over here and the pan number and status you can just directly identify from here against this thing you have the pan number and the status so you just have to capture it from here and you have to uh, paste it in this particular field like that once after you fill up all the information you have to send a mail so this is the whole requirement so in this particular use case we can see that you know like for all of these transactions you have to keep doing this uh, steps as it is like you know for this transaction you have to go into the application you have to download that zip file unzip it extract the fields and put it on this particular uh, excel sheet right so we can see that the process is repetitive right so in the previous video i have explained you what is a transactional process if you haven't watched them i would recommend you to watch because i have explained what is linear framework in that how you can convert your re framework to linear framework so here in this particular video i am going to use linear framework for one of the process for the dispatcher process so it will be very much useful for you to understand the framework because here i'm not going to build the framework okay here i'm just going to utilize the framework which i've already built it okay so i would recommend just go and watch that video uh, you can find that link in the description as well as i will try to link that over here okay on the top of this video so yes uh, so for this if you see this whole thing like you know after i fetch this particular file uh, taking the account number going into application downloading the zip file unzipping it and fetching the details from that particular file everything is repeated that means it's a it for it will be the same process for all of the items that are here that means we can consider this as a transactional process so for this we can utilize re framework as it is right so first deciding factor which framework you can use whether it's based on the type of the process right so for this process like you know from the time we have fetched the account number file from here you can use this as a transactional process right so you can just uh, have the same process you can build the whole thing uh, like you know going to the application uh, downloading the zip file unzipping it and getting the details and putting over here you can have it as a process and you can repeat this process for all these transactions so this process we can cap keep it as a transactional one and you can use the re framework as it is and it has an inbuilt trans um, exception handling and retry mechanism and all of that which will be definitely a great utilization for this process so what is the first point that i've highlighted here is let me put that over here so transactional process from the time we downloaded account number file and can use re framework as it is without changes right so till this part it's clear because uh, we don't need to have much changes it's just that you can have the process build it and put it in the re framework so this is how we decide what process it is and what framework we need so first thing we need to get clarity on that point okay and the next thing so we have decided that this comes under re framework this comes under transactional process but before to this what i actually did this also has to be done through bot right like what i have done i've gone into bots dna page i've clicked on input xlsx and i've downloaded the file right so this whole process will be done only once right there is no need of doing it again and again this should be done only once once after we get this file once after i get this file i'm 
I am telling that I am going to use this as a transaction. So that means you should add this as a transactions into queue, right? So before to this, what will happen? These are the steps. I'm sorry. Before to this, these are the steps. Like you have to go into bots DNA. You should click on this. You should download the file. You should get the information and add it into the queue. So all these steps will be one time process. So this one time process is a linear process, which I talk about in the previous video. So for that one time process, what I am going to do here is the linear framework, which I have builded in the previous video, I will utilize that framework and keep this whole process in the in the framework okay so i hope this is clear so what we are going to do so here um so this is a linear process so what comes under linear process go to what's dna site okay that's the first step and in bots dna site we have to download the excel file okay and then read it and later what we have to do we have to add items into queue perfect so these are the steps that we have to perform and this is a one-time process. So this is a linear process that we are going to perform. So for that, I have the framework already. So let's go ahead and build this whole thing in the linear process. And this comes under the transactional process. So here also, I wanted to introduce the term dispatcher and the performer. So what happens before, uh, you know, the transaction gets picked up, right? So here we are doing the process where each item will be picked up from the queue and it is getting processed okay so this is a performer this is a performer that means it will perform the task by picking the items from the queue it will perform the same task and what is the process that is adding the items into the queue by doing all the prerequisite steps that we call it as a dispatcher that's it you know the dispatcher ideally do all the pre-processing gets the data it streamlines streamlines if something is needed to and then adds the item add all of the items into the queue for the performer for the processing is a dispatcher okay so we have two things one is dispatcher and the other one is a performer dispatcher do all the pre requisites and you know downloads the data and adds the items into the queue so before uh, all this process will be done by the dispatcher once after the items got added into the queue what the performer do is it picks the items from the queue right it picks one item at a time and does the same actions okay so in this video i am going to target the dispatcher actions that means all of this Okay, we are going to build the process and we are going to put it in a linear framework, which we've already seen in the previous video. Okay, so first what we are going to do, we should go into the bots DNA site. Okay, let's open the workflow. Let me, should I already have this? So uh, if you haven't watched the linear framework video, I would suggest you to watch that because I'm not uh, uh, doing that framework thing again here because we've already done it. So I would recommend you please go and watch that video, which will give you some good understanding of how you can actually build a linear framework. So here we are just building only the process. That means the XAMLs that I've told you here, that means going to bots DNA site, uh, downloading the file, reading it, and adding the items into the queue. This will be having the enough preparedness so that all items will be added into the queue, which will be fetched by the performer and be done the next task. Okay. When in the main. So I've already builded them, but still I will show you how you can do that. Okay, so here in the process, what I have is uh, 
Okay. So here in the process, I have navigate to bots DNA and download Excel. Okay. So if I open this workflow, So first I am opening the browser. So I'll also talk about this variables, whatever I've given and all of that. So what I'm doing, I'm opening the browser. I am doing the click. So let's do one thing. I will uh, do this whole thing again with you so that it will be more familiar with you, like what we have done and everything. So you can also do it parallelly with me. Okay. So let's uh, download input file from bots dna okay fine so what i'm doing i'm opening the browser right so what is the browser <clears throat> this is the browser so you should also keep in mind some of the prerequisites that you have to do. So let's say you're running the process again. So you have to ensure that you kill the Chrome or you kill that particular uh, or you close that particular application, right? So that thing you have to keep in mind so that, you know, uh, you don't, uh, you know, try falling under the exceptions. Like usually if there are the same application open in different uh, browsers or sorry, not in browsers, different tabs, you may end up falling into exceptions, right? So just ensure that you do all those pre-checks earlier. <clears throat> so I'm doing the open browser and the browser type is Chrome, okay? Just we will open the browser. Before do that, as I mentioned, I'll manually close this. So once after you open the browser, what you have to do, you have to click on that input and then it will download the file. So ideally, this is downloading directly to that location, right? So it is actually downloading it into our uh, downloads folder. 